Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to use the PK Hack Save Editor for use in games such as Pokemon Sword and Shield, BDSP, and even the most recently released Legends Arceus. Just note that you must have a switch with custom firmware on it if you want to modify your own save file. If you don't have a modded switch and just want Pokemon, then feel free to join my Discord server in the description below, pick up the Pokemon Trader role and gen away. Now let's get started. There are two ways to download PK Hex. You can download it straight from the source from projectpokemon.org or you can download it from the PK Hex plugins from Archit's GitHub. I wouldn't recommend downloading it from the GitHub unless you know that all of the plugins such as ALM and functionality have been updated. This method is really easy to do as all you have to do is put the ALM setup.exe into a folder and run it. Now the wiki does have an installation guide that will walk you through the process, but I do recommend downloading it from Pokemon projects initially. Once you have PKHex downloaded onto your computer, go ahead and run it. You will need a save file to edit on PKHex. The easiest way to do this is by backing up your save on JKSV on your Switch. Once you have a save file, you can drag and drop it and you should load it up on PK Hex. So for example, the save file I will be using in this video will be an example from my brilliant diamond save. Just take your save data dot bin and drag it over and you should see that it will populate on screen. Now, this little exclamation point on the top of your Pokemon is very important. If you see this, it means that the current Pokemon is illegal. And you don't want to bring any illegal Pokemon into the game with you for obvious reasons. Now, if you want to view a Pokemon, you can either drag it from the box or right click and hit view. So if I want to view a Pokemon, all I have to do is right click it and click view, or I can actually drag the Pokemon from my box and bring it over and it will show up. Now in the current Pokemon that I pulled up from my box, you'll see that there is a check mark next to it. This means that the Pokemon is legal. If it's not legal, the program will let you know that they shouldn't technically exist in the game and will give you some reason as to why. Now the red star on the top of my Pokemon indicates that it is currently a shiny Pokemon. Now if you want to make your Pokemon shiny, all you have to do is click on the star icon on the left. If you want to make it a regular one, just re-roll the PID and you'll see that it's not shiny and the star has disappeared. So like I said, go ahead and click on the star icon and you can see that the Pokemon is legal. If you are new to Pokemon and save editing, I would always double check to make sure that the changes that you're making are legal. Now on the main screen, you have a bunch of options, including changing the species, which is just the Pokemon. You can see that when I click on the name of Pokemon, the icon changes to reflect who I picked. Now let's go ahead and pick Infernape as an example. Now you can change their nicknames and level. I wouldn't touch the EXP since it will scale according to the level that you choose. So if I go ahead and click on make it a level 36, you'll see that the experience populates automatically. Now just note that there are obviously some Pokemon that can't be a specific level, like a fully evolved Infernape can't be legally found in the game below a level 36. Um, you can see that the check mark on the top changed to a hazard symbol and it will tell you what's wrong with your Pokemon. Now if I click on it, you'll see what's wrong with it. Now, there are a bunch of things wrong since the previous data was based off of Piplup. Now, this brings me to my next main important point when creating a new Mon. Use the Encounter database for the game you're using. So, in order for you to do this, go to Tools, Data, Encounter database. You should always be doing this. From here, you can choose the species and make sure you click the OT version. For us, this is Brilliant Diamond. So let's go ahead and search for a Chimchar since you can't find an Infernape as a wild encounter in the game. Then let's pick one with the Pokeball. Once you find that one, uh, right click and click on view and you'll see that it will populate in your PK Hack save editor. Now let's go ahead and change the species to an Infernape. Let's change the level to 100 and let's make it shiny and check if it's legal. This is one way to get a legal shiny Infernape into your game. Now other things that you can change on the screen is the nature and stat nature. The held item that the Pokemon is holding, um, giving it hidden abilities, and editing their friendship stat. Now there's no reason that I found um, for you to be changing their friendship stat, so I would normally leave this alone. You also have the ability to mark the Pokemon if it was an egg, infected. Only pick these options if you know what they mean and what they require, otherwise I would just leave them alone. 
Just note that if you do accidentally click the Is Egg option, the Pokemon will be deemed illegal until you change the Met location, which is the next section we're headed to. Now here, we can put in the Origin game and the Battle version. The Origin game should populate appropriately depending on your save file and the info of your Pokemon. I don't really touch Battle version. Um, Met location can be changed. The Pokeball the Pokemon was caught in is important as there are certain Pokemon that can't be in specific balls and are game specific. So please do your research into this before putting your Pokemon in bogus balls. Now if you put it in the wrong ball, it will let you know the Pokemon is illegal so you will have to change it. Now the Met date can be changed to whichever date you like and it should be fine. Don't touch the home tracker, there's really no need for it. Now the next tab that we're going to head over to is the stats tab. Now here it shows you the base values, your IVs, EVs, and the current stats for the Pokemon that you've selected. Now the max IVs you can put for a Pokemon are 31. Now you can go to the IVs and manually change this and you'll see the stat values changing. Now an easy way to modify the IV values to their max values is by holding the control button on your keyboard and clicking on the section and it will automatically turn it to a 31. Now I'm going to hold control and click and you can see that each, th each IV is turning to a 31 and you can also max out your IVs at 252, 252 and 6 to give you a total of 510 IVs across the board and it will show up as green here. Now, if you put any more EVs, it'll um, tell you that it's illegal because it's over the 510 point threshold. So make sure that you're doing this correctly. Additionally, you also have the ability to randomize your IVs and the EVs if you wanted to. Um, on the bottom, you'll see some contest stats. I really don't see any benefits of altering these, but if you wanted to, you could. Now let's move on to the next tab, which is the attack tab section. Now from here, you can choose the moves to give, uh, the amount of PP and the PP ups, which dictates how many times the move can be used. Now, any of the moves listed in green are what the Pokemon can learn by natural means in the game. So you shouldn't have any issue assigning any of these moves to the Pokemon. Uh, for PP ups, I normally just go ahead and max it out so you get the most value for each move that you have. You also have the option to relearn moves here and you have technical records. You can give it all or you can select um, particular ones that you want and you can save it here as well. Now the last tab is OT and miscellaneous. Now here you can change the OT and the latest OT information. It's up to you if you care about this and you want the name of the original trainer changed here in case you got it from someone else during a trade. Now the bottom shows ribbons and memories so you can always alter this if you'd like. Now once you're done modifying your Pokemon to the way that you want, always make sure, always, always make sure that the Pokemon is legal. Then you can go ahead and drag this newly modified Pokemon and drag it over any existing Pokemon in your box. Just note that if you do this, it will overwrite the other Pokemon in your box. So I always advise you to go and put it in an empty box slot as such. And you can go ahead and put as many as you want in your boxes. And if you want to go ahead and put it in your party, you can as well. Now the last tab I want to go over is your SAV. And now you have a lot of options here. You can either export your save box data as a bin file, um, you can export your backups, and you can verify checksums. Now I won't be going over how to use block data in this video. Majority of you won't even need to touch this or the event flags. Um, unless it's been documented appropriately and you know what you're doing to your game, you really don't want to mess with these. Under the box layout tab, you can actually change the wallpaper color for each individual box and you can go ahead and save it. And you can also modify the name of your boxes in that tab. The items tab is pretty self-explanatory you can basically add what you want to your inventory and modify how many of each item that you have so for example if you have a rare candy you can go ahead and max it out to 9.99 and you will have it in your pockets you can do this for practically any item in the game just make sure that you're hitting save afterwards and if there's an empty slot you can go ahead and pick an item that you want to put in your pockets now you have the options of miscellaneous edits as well. Once again, feel free to do this if you know what it entails. If not, don't touch it. Always make sure you have backups of your save file before modifying something you are unsure of. 
Now you can also modify your Pokédex here and mark the decks as complete, so feel free to poke around here and edit the changes as you please. Now I just want to note that the Pokédex editor does not work the same for Pokémon Legends Arceus, I will go over that later. Now under trainer info, you can actually change your SID, TID, your name, your rival name, um, etc. You can even modify your adventure info and your stats. Whatever you do, make sure that you do click save afterwards. Now, what I went over basically applies to both BDSP and Sword and Shield. However, things are just slightly different when it comes to the new game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. So let me show you that as I open up my Legend save and show you exactly what's different. So now I've opened up my save file from Legends Arceus. Now for the most part, you won't see anything new. However, just because every field item is available to you, doesn't mean that it's available in the game. For example, there is no such thing as a held item in Legends Arceus. The second I place a held item in a Pokemon, it will automatically tell you that it's illegal. And it will actually tell you invalid held item is unreleased. In order to make it legal again, just go ahead and make sure that you put it on none. Something most of you guys will probably be editing in this game might be the height and weight of the Pokemon you catch, especially due to the introduction of alpha Pokemon in this game. Also note that this game, as of February 2022, there are no eggs in the game. This doesn't mean it might not come in a future update for the game, but currently there are no nurseries in the game, so don't try to put your Pokemon in an egg. Another thing that is different is the ball that the Pokemon is caught in. Now you do have all the options from previous games showing up here, but that does not mean that these balls exist in Legends Arceus. The ones that do will have LA in parentheses and you should only be using these balls for your Pokemon. Moving over to the stats tab, you're going to notice that you have an extra column called GVs. Now this game works a little differently from the others. You don't need to max out your IVs to necessarily get max stats. You can have a max of 10 GVs per stat, and having IVs is just a head start. So if you have 31 IVs for a stat, you only need 7 GVs to max out that particular stat. A good explanation from Matt from PKX, as seen in the screenshot, goes more in depth as to why this is. As you can see, if you have between 0 to 19 IV, um, you will need max of 10 GVs. 20 to 25 IVs means that you can max out at 9 and 26 to 30 means that you can max out at 8 GVs, and if you're at 31 IVs already, you can max it out at 7 GVs. Now, do you need to read the IVs and guess how many GVs you need to give your Pokemon? Absolutely not. Just like previously, you can hold the control button and left click on your GVs and it will automatically max stack it for your Pokemon based on its already current IVs. Now, this does make your life a lot easier. There is no reason to max out your IVs first before heading over to the GVs because only your GVs matter in this game. So if I hold down control and click on GVs, you can see that for this Pokemon, it already maxed out the GVs appropriately based on the current IVs it had. Just note that there is no Gigantamax or Dynamaxing in Legends Arceus, so don't click it. If you click on it, we're just going to assume that you just never played Legends. Um, if you think that the game will magically Dynamax your Pokemon if you clicked it in PK Hex, um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> there are also no contest stats as of right now, so don't modify those either. Moving on to the attacks tab, one important thing to note is that there are no PP ups in this game. Attempting to PP up a move will flag it illegal, so don't do this. Now the move shop does allow you to have moves to be considered purchased and or mastered. Additionally, there is also an alpha mastered move set here on the bottom. Now the last thing and most important thing you might be wondering about is how to edit the Pokédex in Legends. If you head over to the SAV tab, you will see your Pokédex editor. Now this opens up a new window that basically mimics the Pokédex in the game with all the tasks per Pokémon. Now you can modify each Pokémon's task individually and you can also report the data right away if you'd like. Now just note that there is no way to edit all dex entries for all of the Pokemon at once. As you can see in the screenshot stated by Anubis that the deck structure is very complicated in comparison to previous games. Also for this game, if you go ahead and click on box layout, you also have the ability to change the amount of pastures that you've unlocked. Now that should cover most of the differences between Legends and the other games, so I'm going to move on to some additional tips and tricks that you might not have known about. 
Now let's start off with our first tip, which is by right clicking on the box tab gives you additional options to editing your Pokemon such as delete um, in the form of past generation, foreign, untrained, illegal, or clones. You could sort your boxes based off of like Pokedex number, their levels, or by their type, their version. And you can also modify the Pokemons in a certain box, modify them with max friendship. You can reset their moves. You can modify them to max level, etc. Now my next tip is that you can save the legal Pokemon that you created as a file to be used in Sysbot servers on Discord for genning. So let's take this Palkia for example. Now in order for you to save this Pokemon as a file, all you have to do is click on file, click on save PKM. And then you can choose the area that you want to save it to. Now as you can see that I have a bunch of PA8 files that I saved from Legends already, all I have to do is click on save. Now this file can only be open in PK Hacks and or used on Discord for trading purposes. Now my next tip is for those who don't have a modded switch and still want to use PK Hacks for creating Pokemon files, especially if you want to use it on Discord servers for genning your Pokemon. First, you'll have to change your blank save file to the game that you want to gen the Pokemon for. So let's switch over to BDSP for example. All you want to do is click on the options tab, go to settings, and you want to choose the blank save version. So let's go ahead and click on Brilliant Diamond and X out of it. And you'll see that everything has changed to a brand new um, state. Now I do highly advise for most of you to use the encounter database when trying to um, modify a Pokemon. Now under tools you also have the ability to import and export your current Pokemon set or boxes to a showdown format which is really neat. Now under tools and data, you have the ability to dump and load your boxes as well as accessing the mystery gift database. This database has almost every mystery event that has been released in Pokemon history. You also additionally have access to a batch editor, which I won't be going over in this video, but it's also very useful. Under options, you do have the ability to undo your last change or redo your last change. However, this does not work for everything such as overwriting a Pokemon in your box or your party. Last but not least, don't forget to save your work if you want to load it back up into your game. File, export, save is one way to do it. Or the easier way is clicking on Control E on your keyboard and you can go ahead and click save and it will overwrite the main file. Now this does conclude my video, however just note that if you need help you can always join the PK Hacks development server which I'll post a link to in the description below. Make sure you are reading the channel names before asking your questions. Just note that most of your questions have probably been answered and you only simply need to do a quick search in the server for keywords to find answers or checking the pins in each channel. This is not a server that will hold your hand and walk through as most things are documented already in the wiki. Additionally, my Discord server will be posted below as well. I do have a PK Hex support channel if you have any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.